Who is going to attend the funeral of Queen Elizabeth? What will be her last ride? What are the updates regarding her funeral? We have covered all the latest information in this video, so stay with us till the end to know about the latest happenings. And be sure to like the video as well as subscribe. We wouldn't want you to miss out on any of our upcoming content. Firstly, what will be the Queen's last ride? Queen Elizabeth II was interested in many vehicles over the years, so it was only natural that she was involved in the arrangements for her funeral and the Jaguar X. J. Hearst that would be her last ride this last week. The Queen enjoyed driving and was an avid driver who specialized as a mechanic and truck driver toward the conclusion of the Second World War. However, she was always chauffeured when in public. Next, which cars has she driven in her life? Although she had never been permitted to ride in a London taxi or bus, she completed her driving lesson in two days less time than was required, according to a report from the time. The Queen drove various British automobiles after the war, including the prom prominent Rolls-Royce and Bentley models, a Rover P5B, a Vauxhall Cresta Estate, and a Jaguar X-Type wagon, both of which were still in her possession at the time of her passing. She's claimed to have had a collection of vehicles valued at about 10 million pounds, with Land Rovers being her true passion. So what about the Queen's driving license? The Queen never actually earned her driving license, despite having an apparent affinity for automobiles and a preference for driving herself across her several royal estates. As she was always driven by someone else in public and never drove on her private property, she never truly needed a license. However, because British driving licenses are granted in the name of the Queen, providing one to herself would be unnecessary, for the exact reason she didn't need a passport. In light of this, only the current monarch is permitted to drive in the UK. All other members of the British royal family must take a test. Up next, what did the Queen do during Saudi Arabia's prince visit? When Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Abdullah visited her Balmoral estate in 1990, she made a stunning and subtly political statement. Abdullah was shocked when the Queen sat in the driving seat when he requested a visit to the estate because women were not permitted to drive in Saudi Arabia at the time. Abdullah was unfamiliar with being driven by a woman, let alone a Queen. As per Sir Sherrod Cowper calls, a former British ambassador to Saudi Arabia to whom both the Queen and Abdullah later separately related the story. In his autobiography, Cowper calls writes, his uneasiness only intensified as the Queen and army army driver in the war drove the Land Rover over the narrow Scottish estate roads, talking all the time. The Crown Prince pleaded with the Queen to take it easy and pay attention to the road ahead through his interpreter. So who designed the Queen's last ride? She naturally became interested in the vehicle's design that would transport her to her ultimate resting place. The Queen personally selected significant design elements of the new Jaguar State hearse, created by the Royal Household and Jaguar Land Rover, and will also be used during the funeral. The hearse which is based on a Jaguar XJ has three intense spotlights inside along one roof edge, big windows on the side and rear, and a see-through glass canopy. It has a royal claret finish, the same color as the official royal and state cars driven by members of the royal family while performing their official duties. The state hearse has been built to permit people in public to have a better sight of Her Majesty's coffin as it travels through London and Windsor, a representative for Buckingham Palace said in a statement about the XJ. Next, what were the concerns regarding the Queen's ride back to Windsor. The Queen's ride back to Windsor from Scotland had a rocky beginning when she was put in the Mercedes-Benz E-Class hearse of William Purves' funeral directors. Whereas the model of the car aroused a few questions, the overt funeral home advertisement on the side window infuriated people. It crashed the business's website with the resulting traffic. The vehicle in question was a Benz H4, created by German coach builder Benz, using a Mercedes E-Class from the W212 generation. The car was initially silver, wrapped in black to follow royal custom. The Mercedes was only being used in Scotland, and the custom Jaguar would take over responsibilities once her coffin arrived in London, despite initial concerns about why the Queen wasn't being transported in a British brand. The Queen Mother's coffin was transported in a Jaguar hearse in 2002, an older model XJ made by British coach builder Wilcox Limousines, which is believed to have made the new car. The Jaguar XJ seems especially appropriate for the monarch. So. How the late Prince Philip had control over his funeral and transportation. The late Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, had much more influence over his funeral transportation and even created his specially made Land Rover vehicle for his funeral in April 2021. The Queen gave her final consent for her farewell ride. After expressing his wish to the Queen for a short funeral, Philip, who passed away at the age of 99, started working on the customized Land Rover Defender TD5 130 in 2003, when he turned 82. 
he reportedly said, just chuck me in the back of a Land Rover and drive me to Windsor. Up next, what are the updates regarding the funeral of the Queen? London, Buckingham Palace provided further information on Thursday about the preparations for Queen Elizabeth II's state funeral, which will begin on September 19th at 6 a.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. local. The service will be held in the center of London at Westminster Abbey. For many years, the old abbey has served as the location for coronations of monarchs, including the Queen's own, in 1953. It was also there that the Queen wed Prince Philip in 1947. There hasn't been a royal funeral there since the 18th century. However, Queen Elizabeth II's mother's burial occurred in 2002. Arrangements for the funeral have been in place for years, with the Queen consulting on them. The Queen's coffin will be transported on a gun carriage Monday morning to Westminster Abbey, where the Archbishop of Canterbury will deliver a speech. The casket is now in state at Westminster Hall, so the general public can pay tribute to the late monarch. King Charles III and other royal family members will follow the casket to Westminster Abbey. Two minutes of quiet will be observed nationwide following the service. So where will the Queen's final resting place be? The late monarch's body will be transported to Windsor Castle St. George's Chapel by hearse and walking procession after the service, which will take place at noon local time, 7 a.m. Eastern. Windsor Castle is a vast estate west of London where the late monarch spent much of her life and her last few years secluded amid the coronavirus pandemic. The remains of Princess Margaret, the sister of the Queen, and her late husband, Prince Philip, are interred in St. George's Chapel. The royal family frequently chooses this church for special occasions, like weddings and funerals. Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, were married there, and Philip's burial was also held there. At about 4 p.m. local time, 11 a.m. Eastern, a televised committal ceremony will be held once her coffin is received. At around 7.30 p.m. local time, a private service for members of the royal family will be held. At that time, the cameras will be turned off, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. So who will attend the funeral? In recent years, one of the most prominent royal and political gatherings in the UK has been anticipated for the Queen's burial. Although the palace declined to provide attendance figures, Westminster Abbey has a capacity of more than 2,000. According to reports, world leaders were urged to fly commercially to London, if feasible, and to take special buses set aside just for the event to get to Westminster on the morning of the funeral, along with other leaders from the British Commonwealth, including the Prime Ministers of Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and Bangladesh, as well as the Presidents of India and Sri Lanka. President Biden and his first wife, Jill Biden, have stated that they will join the Queen's funeral. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and French President Emmanuel Macron are other significant figures expected to attend. The King and Queen of Belgium, the King and Queen of the Netherlands, the King and Queen Queen of Spain and Japan's Emperor Naruhito are among the non-British royalty who are anticipated to attend. According to British government sources cited by BBC News, the invitation was extended to Chinese President Xi Jinping, and the Foreign Ministry of China has stated plans to send a high-level group. Iran would be represented at the ambassadorial level. Lastly, who is not welcome? As reported by the BBC, neither representatives from President Putin's Russia nor its close ally Belarus, nor from Afghanistan under Taliban rule, Syria, or Venezuela have been allowed to the Queen's funeral. According to the BBC, Nicaragua and North Korea have been asked to send ambassadors, not heads of state. So here's everything you need to know about the sad death of Her Majesty, her last ride, and the people who were invited and who were not. What are your thoughts regarding all the arrangements? How do you think things will change after the Queen's death? Let us know what you think in the comments section, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We wouldn't want you to miss out on any of our upcoming content. Content. Thanks for watching.